That ain't no chewy this time. <laughs> Boy. Hey folks, Mississippi Outdoors is at Circle Limb Plantation. We're here in Macon, Mississippi. We got here this afternoon. We came in, got our clothes on. Hey, time's a wasting. We going hunting and we looking for big boy. So let's go. Hey folks, this is our first afternoon hunt. Circle in, first time that we've, we've hunted here. Uh, had a great hunt, beautiful field. Had 11 deer came out today. We had one small buck and he even, he got to chasing the doe, so we, we know that the, the, rut's, the rut's close. Uh, we're gonna try and sneak out of here. We go up. We're gonna hunt in the morning for sure, I can promise you that. That alarm clock will go off in Mississippi outdoors and be back out of here, but uh, had a great hunt. We're excited. Folks, Mississippi Outdoors is here at Circle M Plantation, Circle M Hunting Plantation. I'm here with Bo Nolan, and Bo, it is, golly, it's been a pleasure. We've been here for, for two days now. We hunted yesterday afternoon, this morning. We have, eat, we have eaten like kings, and um, you gotta tell the folks, just tell us about Circle M and, and what all it offers. Well, uh, Circle M is here in Macon, Mississippi, and uh, we're at the kind of the top end of the Black Belt, and uh, it's a family-owned, and it, we operate it as a commercial fishing, hunting and fishing operation. Uh, we hunt turkeys and quail and deer, and uh, we've got a 55-acre lake that's got F1 bass in it. Tell us about the different hunts that uh, Circle M offers. Well, you know, again, it's uh, it's, it's deer, turkey, and quail. Uh, you know, our, our uh, uh, we're very focused on on managing uh, our property here. And you know, the things we do for the quail are also beneficial for the uh, for the deer and the turkey. So it's it's kind of neat to see how efforts that were initially focused on on one uh, game species helps in other areas. The deer hunting, um, you've actually got, it's gotta be eight points or 16 inches. Yeah, what we try to do is, is communicate some guidelines to our customers that move, move them in their, in, their, in their harvest, their selection, towards a four and a half year old deer. And uh, you know, at eight points or better outside the ears, which is about 16 inches, or a 21 inch main beam. But we want, we want eight points or better with either uh, outside the ears or 21 inch main beam. We'll take either one. Since I was a little boy, I mean, people have talked and told me about Circle M. And uh, yesterday was, uh, I guess, my, my special day. It's the first opportunity that I've had to be here. And uh, Circle M is, is everything and more uh, what people have told me. And I couldn't be any more excited. But like I said, I'm still hunting. We got this yeah, afternoon. Don't, don't give up. <laughs> don't stop eating and keep on. I promise you. We just got through eating. It's getting late in the afternoon. I know what Mississippi Outdoors is fixing to do. Go We're on. fixing to go kill Big Daddy. Appreciate it. Thank you, sir.
This is Derek now. This is Mississippi Outdoors. We're in Circle Hill Plantation. This is our second afternoon hunt. We saw a lot of deer yesterday. Just not a shooter, but we're going to, Derek's taking us to Hooters. We're going to Hooters Deer Stand. It's a big, big daddy. Big daddy. Big daddy. That's it, right? That's all. That's all. Good luck. We had Circle M Plantation. We had an eight, no, we had a seven point come out. I mean, a good seven point. But I'm gonna tell you what, we just smoked an eight, slinging and stinging. We just shot a big, big eight point. Man, that's great. That's a good one. That's good deer. We had Hooters. We had Hooters deer stand. I'm gonna tell you, Hooters is good luck all day long. <laughs> That deer, the last place I saw him was going in right there on that broom sage, right, right to the left side of it. He's not far, he's hit good. Okay. Hey, you put us on the hooter stand today? Yes, sir. Booyah! <laughs> good job. Hey, hey. Golly. Circle in. Macon, Mississippi. Anybody can come do this. I'm telling you, you better come get some of this. This, this is awesome. Hey, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. He's got a kicker, 10 point. Hey folks, hey, it's been fun, been rewarding. We'll see you outdoors again somewhere in Mississippi. For over 70 years, Mississippi Outdoors Magazine has served the readers of the Magnolia State. In it contains several interesting features such as wildlife photography, salooner tables, and even a kids page. Subscriptions to the magazine are very inexpensive, and when you subscribe, you will receive six bi-monthly issues containing articles on hunting and fishing in the state, public lakes, state parks, and even our wildlife management areas. For more information, call our toll-free number at 1-888-874-5785. Cotton and fish. Nice trout, 44 inches. Just some old trout up at hand. We're back on the coast today. We're going trout fishing with Southern Extreme Charters and Mr. Brett Ladner. Brett, tell us a little bit about what we're going to do today. We're going to run uh, out to some open water on the outside of the marsh there, and uh, water's been a little clean out there. And uh, we're going to catch some big yellow mouse. We also got a uh, co fisherman here, Mr. Nathan Serpaz. How you doing? I, I hear you taught this guy how to fish. Is that true? Ah, uh, yes, I did. Long, long, long time ago. Uh, that, that was now a, he's teaching me. That's what I'm talking now about. Re returning the favor, huh? Well, let's go get some trout. <laughs> what we've done is we were running on the outside here, and we came across these birds working on this oyster bar right here. So it, it's hard to pass up birds. Usually, in the birds, just you know, sometimes it's a hit and miss. You catch school trout. Sometimes you might get on some good ones. Oh, the old man got the first pack. I don't know. <laughs> no. That's what it is. They small. Okay, yeah. yeah. These old yellow mouth speckled trout. Patting the fish. The first fish of the day, and we pulled her out on a cat five, the uh, shrimp minnow. 
in pearl and green. Um, is it, Bradford? And ain't no chiwi this time. <laughs> oh, beautiful trout. Look at here. Look at that. Come on, get up. Oh, now nah, the old man got all something. Right, I don't know. He might have me. Oh, I think he's got yeah, you. Got you. Come on here, you big old trout. But I'm going to tell you what. I love catching with plastic before I bait. <laughs> I had to get him out of that hole over there. Oh yeah, nice. Oh, come on, man. Eh? That's legal. We're going to give it a try. He got his Carolina rig on the Carolina rig plastic. Carolina rig plastic. I shouldn't be showing nobody this. <laughs> Good fish. You know, net, net Brett? Got him. Got him. Quick. I'm going to change baits on you, too. Oh, you went back to your. Uh, no. Look. Yeah. yeah, they there, too. I, I, I switched back over to my jig head. Um, a little smaller fish. Like I say, it, it, the Carolina rig works well with the suicide croaker, but it doesn't work as well with these other baits. And if they want these shrimp-looking baits, you know, they gonna you gotta you gotta you gotta hit go with what they want. The first cat five trout. You gotta take advantage of days like today, you know? This, it, you don't get many of these where you can actually just plunk around with a trolling motor. I mean, there's nobody here, we got it to ourselves. Um, we've pretty much caught fish everything on this west side of the rig since we got here. A nice one. Ooh, another pretty trout. Pretty trout. Uh, you good, bump mine, good, hit yours. Good fish too. I'll take those all day. All day. Money in the bank. Oh, okay. Oh, I had one too, Todd. That's a nice one. Oh, yeah, it's a nice one. This time of year, we're waiting on our first, it's early spring, we're waiting on our first spawn to come in. Usually the first full moon in May is when we, um, you'll catch, start catching them in April if the weather conditions are right. Um, but usually the first full moon in May is when your first big trout's gonna come in for the spawn. Now they're gonna spawn all the way to September. Um, so when they come in for the spawn, you can, May is our big trout month. It's also our windiest month. Um, very unpredictable in the weather, but if you can pick a day like this, it don't get any better. Oh, yeah. That's a good fish, too. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That one, man. That's what we have to right there, babe. Ooh. Rolling a little cornmeal. I'm gonna switch over. We've been seeing we got seen a lot of bait on top water. And we're seeing some good trout pop pop the surface. So I mean they 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 won't top. We got I gotta try them. I'm gonna go with a popping cork. Either we are in some fairly deep water. Just because you're in deep water doesn't mean they won't bite the top. These little males, they're waiting on the females to come back. Mm -hmm. So Brett, uh, kind of slowed down. What, what do you think we know to do? Todd went slack on us, and uh, we had a pretty good bite going. You know, it wasn't one behind another, but it was pretty steady. And uh, that tide slacked on us, so we're going to move a little further out and see if we can find some tide movement and maybe find some fish. Over here, the tide comes in before there. So we'll come over here and we'll try for a little while, and as the tide goes in, seen the two lines, we came across the tide line. That's a nice good trout. Beautiful. Look, look, look. Whoa. He 
jumped in the net. Did you see that? Yeah, that was. Jump. Look who woke up. I think you're back in the running for big fish of the day. <laughs> no, I don't oh, think yeah. so. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. He's That's a four pound good. fish. Oh yeah, that's, that's 24 that's inches all day long. Water. That's pretty in the water. That's pretty in the water. Oh, that's nice. That's nice. Yeah. Oh, we got bigger for the day in here. Look at here. That's 24 inches. Man. Go ahead, yeah. hold that. Keep that neck. Keep that neck. Two at a time. Two at a time. To the top. To the top. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. Oh my. Look at the two with him right there. Oh, look at the size of that trap. Oh. <laughs> Lady uh, fish. Lady fish. <laughs> oh, we've got a box full of trout, but we can always use a few more in it, right? Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, pretty fish, pretty fish. Whew. Well, Brett, I want to thank you, my man. We had a great trip with you today. Southern Extreme Charters. Go put you on them. As you can see, there's some beautiful trout today. Wonderful time. Wow! <laughs> Just some little cool trout up in here. Did you know that money spent on a Mississippi hunting and fishing license is just like an investment? The Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fisheries, and Parks uses money from license sales to enhance hunting and fishing, like providing public hunting opportunities on wildlife management areas, advising private landowners on deer and habitat management, providing public fishing opportunities on state lakes, and operating fish hatcheries for stocking public lakes and streams. So make an investment in the great outdoors. Buy your Mississippi hunting and fishing license today. What we're going to do this morning is show you fellas what our routine preserved quail hunt looks like. And we always start with a safety talk. Uh, it's safety first, and on every hunt that we have, we give a safety talk before we start. What we generally do is a four-man hunt. This morning, we'll probably just have two shooters. And when we have four, we take turns shooting. We'll put two shooters on the ground at the time. The other two stay on or near the buggy. And we found that's a lot safer. If you get more than two people on the ground at one time for a covey rise of quail, uh, it, it can get dangerous. So we'll have two, uh, two shooters on the ground at the time, and we'll have a two-shell rule. So anybody shooting pumps or automatics, we only put two shells in the gun at the time. Uh, one of my guys used to say, if you're shooting an over and under or side by side, just put as many in there as you can. <laughs> and that keeps everybody even. Two shots. So we found that if you've got three shots, that last one is usually the dangerous one. Uh, usually the birds are too far out of range by then, or either they're going back toward the buggy. So we just uh, we just uh, ab absolutely don't do a third shot. So two shooters on the ground at the time for a cover your eyes, and then two shells in the gun. Randy and Stanley will be handling the dogs for us this morning and one of them will take turns. They'll alternate handling the dogs, and we'll have one or two pointing dogs on the ground at the time. And what we'll do is follow along with this buggy and let the dogs work out in front of us. Uh, we're doing an early release quail hunt, and we know where our cubbies are. Uh, we're gonna try to find somewhere between 10 and 12 cubbies this morning. We'll put two dogs down or one dog down, depending on what the guys want to use, and then we'll just follow along behind them with everybody on the buggy, guns unloaded. When we get a point, and we can drive to within sight of most every point that we'll see this morning, when we get a point, our two shooters will get down, load the guns, and then follow along with Randy or Stanley, whoever the dog handler is that's handling the dogs at the time. And he'll have a third dog with him. He'll have a flush dog, which is a little different than most preserves use. Uh, we found that the flush dog really makes uh, the birds fly good. 
and uh, he's trained to stay right with the guide, and then he's released on command to go in and flush the birds. The point dogs, of course, do the pointing, and then they'll do most of the retrieving. We found if you'll stay as close as you can to that dog handler, one on either side, that you have a better opportunity for a shot. If things work like they're supposed to, when he releases that flush dog, the cubby of birds should get up and go away from you. The shooter on the left takes everything from the middle to his left. The shooter on the right takes everything from the middle back to his side. Well, let's go find some birds. Y'all ready? Let's do it. Do it. We've been doing this quail hunt for about uh, 15 years now, and we have uh, just over 1,200 acres dedicated to the quail corps. We, uh, we're an early release operation. We'll start releasing birds in September. We'll try to put up 12 to 14 cubs, so everybody will get to shoot at least six cubs. I mean, I'm sure you have some natural wild cubbies on Oh, we do. We do. We've been doing this long enough now that, uh, that, that everything that we do for the pen raised birds helps the wild. So uh, our wild bird population is just down exponentially. And if we're lucky, we'll probably find a cubby or two of wild birds today. A hunt usually takes about five hours. There you go, thank you. Get him, get him, get him, get him. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, wasn't nothing but air and opportunity there. Get him, Randy. Get him, get him, get him. <laughs> hey, that was a chucker. Folks that are my age and, and even Randy's age remember hunting wild birds. And that kind of disappeared from this part of the world. And, and there are a lot of theories about why. You know, uh, there's not much farming anymore. There's not much gardening anymore. When I was a little boy, and probably even when you were, Randy, you could hunt from one garden spot to another. Everybody that had a pea patch had a, had a covey of quail. Well, in this part of the world, all the open land's been planted in pine trees. So the habitat's not there. And then there's theories that maybe the fire ants did something to the quail, uh, the predators, or hawks are our biggest predator, hawks and bobcat. When we started doing this quail hunt 15 years ago, it was pretty rare to see a bobcat. And now we see bobcats every day. They, they're here, and, and the hawks are here. But what we've tried to do is to recreate as much as we can uh, and simulate a wild bird hunt. Um, and you'll find that these birds that are early released will fly a lot like wild birds, and they really uh, have become wild. They've been out long enough. The property is 4,200 acres, and I've dedicated about 1,200 to our bird courses. Uh, we hunt uh, on a hunt like we were on this morning. We covered about 600 acres. So we've got an identical second bird course that covers another 600 acres. And as you saw, it's mostly thinned thin pine timber, uh, some uh, pipeline and uh, utility right of ways, and then some open fields. Not four for four. Our preserve season starts in October and we can hunt through April. You know, the season actually goes to the first day of May. The weather usually shuts us down about the first week in April, so we'll be hunting at least until the first week in April. Ty, how about a bird? Thank you. Well, Doc, that was a fine shoot. Well, I sure enjoyed and it. And I, I want to thank you for the hunt we had today. And I'm going to tell you, these birds are as wild as they can get. Well, that's good. And they're getting up. Well, that's and what we try to do. We want to make them as much like a wild bird hunt as we can. <laughs> we yeah. sure had a good morning. Get on your game, because they're going to go. What did we find? About 12 cubbies this morning? About 12 cubbies. So we had a, we had a good morning. Beautiful hunt. Beautiful hunt. Sure. Once again, Mill Book. Pleasure entertaining you fellas. Mill Book Plantation. Stonewall, Mississippi. Stonewall, Mississippi. He's got them. All right. Thanks. Great lot. time.
this quail says, see you outdoors. Time is time we'll spend 